This is the last 10 podcast with Brenda Lomelli, episode 103. You're killing it in your business and career. You're growing professionally and personally. You're smashing through your goals. But those weight loss goals are a whole different story. This is The Last 10 Podcast, a show to help you lose that last 10 pounds and stay at your ideal weight for good. Balancing all aspects of professional and personal life is tough, but here you're putting yourself at the number one priority. Here's your host, a lady boss and nutritionist who prides herself on working with the unstoppable woman, Brenda Lomelli. Hey, hey, gorgeous. Happy Monday and welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. Well, yeah, we are now in March. Isn't that amazing? It is, we're entering spring. Pretty excited about that. The weather here in Phoenix has been, I mean, we, I feel like we get spring for like two days. (laughs) Okay. Maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month. And then it just like turns into summer, but just a quick kind of a disclaimer here. There, the house right in front of us, and my office is right in the front of the house, but the house right in front of us has been completely torn down and is being completely rebuilt. And so every day there's like some sort of construction noise happening. So while I'm recording the podcast, if you hear kind of banging sounds or beeping sounds from the trucks moving in and out. That's what we got going on. And, you know, this is going to be something that's just happening right across the street from me for a while. So just, you know, don't pay much attention to it. That's what it is. And the construction really happens during the their work hours are my work hours. That's when I get my stuff done. So, but you might not be able to hear it, but just in case you do, that's what it is. If you hear that faintly in the background. All right, let's talk about today's subject. I'm really excited to talk about this. I know I always say that, but I always really am excited. (laughs) So today we're going to talk about obligation eating. And I actually have never heard anyone else use that terminology before, but it's pretty self-explanatory and I just feel like it needs to be a term because it happens so much. I cannot tell you how often I coach my clients on moments when they eat something that they actually don't want to eat, like they literally don't want it, but they eat it because they feel obligated to. So if we were to define obligation eating, it literally would be when you eat because you feel obligated to, or out of some sense of obligation. The other way that it can sound like is, I don't want to make that person feel bad. It's, it, they're basically the same thing. So to get into this, I want to explain it and I want to give some examples. Actually, I want to start off with a story. I actually love this story. So I want to share it with you. There was a client that I worked with a little bit, a little while back, and she was amazing. A brilliant woman. She came to me. She really was wanting to and her struggle with her weight. She had been wanting to lose weight for a while. One of the things that really excited her and motivated her is she told me, Brenda, I have this entire closet full of these beautiful dresses, designer clothes. Like I want to be able to get back into those. And that was really one of the reasons that there were more reasons, but that was one thing she was so, so excited to. And she was like, Really, if you can help me get back to my goal weight, you will literally save me money, even though it would be an investment to work with me. And I was so confident that we would be able to do that. And sure enough, by the time she got to the end of the program, she was exactly at the weight that she wanted to be at, like to the number. So that was really fun. But one of the times, and it's fun for me to watch, of course, and to just be a part of that process and to see my client really understand like how to change their own behaviors. But of course, it's the most fun for my client because now she's able to 
live really her life maintaining these results in a way that feels effortless, like being able to wear everything in her closet that she wants to wear, not struggling every morning trying to figure out, well, what am I going to wear? And like feeling like she can't find anything to wear. And that honestly, for so many women is such an energy drainer every morning, like that whole morning piece where you're ugh, going through your closet tons of stuff ends up on the floor because you don't feel comfortable in it or it's too tight or you just don't feel like you it looks right or it fits right or maybe you literally can't even breathe because it's gotten too tight. So, okay, let me get to the point of the story here. But I just, I get really excited. So she loved her results and she really made this commitment to herself, got the support she needed and got back into everything in her closet, which is so much fun. So, one of the things we worked on one time is she, so she's brilliant. Like I said, a brilliant woman. She's actually a physician, owned her own practice. And one of the things that I, I actually have a lot of clients that are physicians. It's one of, it's just some, I attract physicians a lot and I would do a lot of work. A lot of my clients happen to be physicians, just like this example here. And I know that when I'm working with physicians or also like nurse practitioners, et cetera, one of the things I hear a lot is like, all these reps are bringing food to the office and like other other offices also send gifts. And I, at the time that I was working with this client, it was through the holidays. And so basically, apparently, I don't know, I didn't know this, so I, but I get kind of like this introduction into the world of, you know, physicians and uh, practices, et cetera. What physicians do is like one practice will send other partner practices that send refer referral clients over to them, et cetera. They'll send over, you know, holiday gifts and holiday baskets and also clients bring in things, especially through the holidays, fresh baked cookies, et cetera, et cetera. I know that I get this a lot from teachers as well. It really anyone that works in any like office type setting where you have coworkers and there's clients and through the holidays, there's all these thank you gifts that are being brought in, et cetera. So anyways, there was a day when we had one of our, we were doing some coaching. It was our weekly coaching call. And here's what happened. She said, you know, I had been having a great day, like had a great breakfast, had a great lunch. And then one of our favorite clients, she's been a client for years and years, brought in some fresh baked cookies, like made them from scratch, fresh baked cookies. And she's like, I genuinely didn't even want them. Like I was feeling so good. And I remember, I remember this very, very clearly. She was probably like two or three pounds at this point from getting to her goal. I mean, she was just so excited about it. So she explained to me, you know, this client of ours brought in these cookies, brought them in for myself or the other office staff, et cetera. And she just felt, this is what she thought. Well, she probably worked so hard and it probably was so much work for her to make these cookies from scratch. And she's probably going to ask me tomorrow if I had some and if I liked them. And so I need to have some. And that is such a great example of obligation eating. She went and ate the cookie out of this sense of obligation. And some of the thoughts that she was thinking and what it sounded like in her head was like, she worked so hard, like it'd be so rude if I don't have one. She's going to be offended if I don't have one. It's going to be awkward tomorrow when she asked me if I liked them and I can't tell her anything because I didn't have one. Oh, by the way, this client wasn't even there. She just like dropped them off for all the office people and all her staff, et cetera. And then went and then was going to come back the next day. So my client, of course, went and had a cookie. And then, by the way, had another one, but that's a whole nother story. But the first one was definitely obligation eating. I want you to think about, before I continue with the story, because there's more and it's actually kind of funny and you're going to learn so much from it. I want you to think about how often do you eat things out of not wanting to, quote unquote, make someone feel bad? or quote unquote, offend someone, or look rude, or seem rude, or come, off, 
or come across as unappreciative. That was also one of the things my client was telling me is like, I, I like to be appreciative when someone does something sweet and something thoughtful and when they put in a lot of effort and into making something from scratch and, you know, she probably had to work so hard and put in so much time, etc. So she went and ate the cookie. But what I want you to think about is how often do you eat something out of a sense of obligation, not wanting to hurt someone else's feelings or offend them or make them quote unquote feel bad, or you don't want to appear to be rude or unappreciative, right? So she ate the cookie and then this was really fascinating because we coached on it. And what I was offering to her is like, you know, these are all stories you're telling yourself about how hard she worked and how hard it was to like for her to make those cookies. I was like, what if, what if she loves to bake? Right? So this is during our coaching that, that same day that she ate that cookie. What if, what if this client of yours, what if this patient of yours actually loves to bake and had the best time doing it and was just excited that she had the opportunity to bake so that she could bring these cookies to you guys? And, uh, you know, she was a little skeptical, like, mm, okay, yeah, yeah, I guess that's possible. And then I also offered to her, what if there's other ways of demonstrating appreciation and saying thank you and just like demonstrating so much appreciation for the fact that she did bake those cookies from scratch for you and your office staff. What if there are other ways? And also there's this whole story that she's going to be so deeply offended. What if she doesn't even care? Like what if literally this just doesn't even matter to her? Has there ever been a moment, this is what I offered to my client as we were coaching, has there ever been a time where you maybe hosted a party or, or baked something or made some sort of dish and someone doesn't have it where you just don't care and it's not that serious and it really isn't like this big offensive thing where you think that person's rude and unappreciative and just like a bad human so this, and this is what a big part of what coaching is, is myself really with my clients spending time exploring what their beliefs, current beliefs are that are leading to these actions and these choices, such as eating these cookies, which just are not aligned with your goals and the results you want to create. So that's what we coached on. And I want you to also consider all those things, right? Like, what if it's possible that this person you're thinking is going to be so offended? What if they don't even care? What if, oh, oh my gosh, here's one. What if they don't even notice? And I'm going to share also some personal examples for me. I cannot even tell you how many times I have eaten so many things in the past due to obligation, that, that sense of obligation and of not wanting to make someone else feel bad, et cetera. So here is a funny thing that happened. When I, when we had our coaching call the following week, she said, Brenda, I have to tell you the funniest thing. She said, after our coaching session, the very next day, that same client came into the office and she did ask me, she said, how were the cookies? Did you like them? And my client said, yes, they were delicious. And then her client said, oh, good. I'm glad you liked them. I love to bake, but I didn't want to leave these cookies at home because I don't eat sugar. Oh, my gosh. We both just started laughing so hard because how ironic and funny is that? <laughs> right? That is exactly what we were discussing in our session is this high possibility that this whole story she was telling herself, how offended this person would be, how hard she had been working, slaving away as if, you know, she was being tortured as she was making these cookies. It ended up being that her client actually loves to bake, but herself didn't even eat them because she doesn't eat sugar. Oh, I just love that story. And I hope that you are just having an aha moment as much as my client did. Like her brain was kind of, her mind was kind of blown a little bit. And I couldn't have like set that up myself in any better way. Now, listen, of course, it is possible that 
if someone does bake something or make something or offer you something and you say no, it is possible that they might say, oh my gosh, why not? Just have a piece. Come on. People for sure do that as well. But also what I want you to know there is that that is completely up to them. If someone is offended by a decision that you're making to not eat something, that's completely up to them. But I want you to First of all, question all of these stories that we tell ourselves that someone's going to be so offended, that they're going to think you're so rude. Honestly, for the most part, each of us are so busy thinking about ourselves that we're not really thinking that much about other people, right? So unless we're thinking about being worried about what they might think of you, but then that still always comes back to you thinking about you. This was such a beautiful example because... I guarantee you, if my client would have said, oh, you know, thank you so much for making those, all the staff enjoyed them, and maybe didn't even mention that she didn't have one, this client wouldn't even care. (laughs) Obviously, she didn't even eat the cookies herself. She herself doesn't even eat sugar. But also, even if my client would have said, hey, thank you so much for making these, they're amazing, oh my gosh, they look so beautiful, but right now, I'm really working on, you know, losing a couple pounds. I'm getting ready for a vacation or whatever. I mean, she could explain it. She could not explain it. She could just say, oh, I didn't have one, but they looked amazing. Thank you so much. The staff really enjoyed them. You can still express so much gratitude and be so gracious and appreciative. You do not have to put that piece of food in your body if you don't want to. Now, if you do want to, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother podcast, right? And it might be something that you just choose to have as your joy, 100% fine, completely just different subject. What I'm talking about here is when someone offers you something or something is available, here's another thing that's really interesting. There are some times when food is available and no one's even asking you to have it and they didn't even really make it for you, but you experience a sense of feeling of obligation. And I want you to know that anytime you feel sort of obligated to, or you're worried, I don't want to make people feel bad or seem rude. That's just how you're thinking about it. And it's usually just made up by a bunch of stories of how we're used to thinking about it. People are going to be offended. People are just the idea that someone's even going to care is a story because most of the time, no one will even notice. No one will even care. And like I said, if they do care, that's completely up to them. So in this case, the story, I love this story. It's such a great example. My client could have just expressed, you know, she, one of her main concerns is that she wanted to still be so grateful and gracious and, and express gratitude. And it is so, so possible to do that in other ways. You know, here's one thing that I want you to consider. What if someone decides to, you know, make you some sort of pot roast? And either bring it to your work or bring it to your home and they made it for you and your family. And let's say you are a vegetarian. It's part of your religion. You literally have never eaten meat in your life. Would you eat that pot roast just because that person made it for you? And would it be considered rude if you say, oh, thank you so much. This looks amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to make this for me and my family or me and the office staff or what, whatever your circum- circumstance would be, would it be considered rude if you say no to the pot roast because you're a vegetarian? Due to religious beliefs, you've never eaten a piece of meat ever in your life. Most of us would not interpret that as rude. So why do we think of it as rude to say no to something that is not what you want to do, no matter what the reason is. Why is this? And of course, this is just an example. Why is veg- being a vegetarian that doesn't eat meat a sufficiently acceptable reason? And why isn't just the fact that you just don't want to have something? Why isn't that sufficient? Well, what I want to offer to you is that it is. And that you can think of it the exact same way. Just as much as a vegetarian you know, likely you don't think that that's rude. You don't have that perspective or that interpretation of it. Just as much as a vegetarian can say, oh, you know, I'm not going to thank you so much for the pot roast looks amazing, but I'm not going to have some. Just as much as that's not rude, we can also think about it exactly the same 
If you say no to anything you do not want to eat for any reason that is important to you, that is the piece that matters. If it's important to you, whatever the reason is, and you actually don't want to eat it, you don't have to think of it as being rude. You don't have to worry about anyone else being offended. You just get to make the decision that is the best for you. And by the way, one of the things that my client asked me is she's like, well, Brenda, what do you do? How do you like not be rude when, you know, someone makes something and everyone else is having it and, you know, someone made it from scratch or whatever. And how do you not be rude? And I told her, you know what, that's actually a really great question. And I'm happy to answer it because being incredibly grateful and appreciative and expressing gratitude is like, for me, one of the biggest, most important things for all the people in my life. Like I love to just write random thank you notes and thank you letters. And I even like my friends, my very close family and friends, sometimes I get teased for this in a loving way, of course. I have been known to write like these super long, just like love thank you texts that are kind of like novelish <laughs> or super long, like thank you emails expressing gratitude and thank you cards are one of my favorite things. Like gratitude is and expressing gratitude is so, so important for me. However, this is something that I don't struggle with anymore at all because let me give you an example. Um, which is the example I shared with my client. Since we were going through the holidays at the time, there was a very specific and recent example that had happened. Our family every year has like this huge Thanksgiving is the biggest holiday on my mom's side of the family. We have this three-day family reunion thing that happens every year for Thanksgiving, etc. So much fun, so much food, and a lot of homemade food that people make from scratch. And I am just like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Like, how did you make it? I'm not being actually fake. I genuinely, I don't, you may or may not have heard of me say this on the podcast, but I actually did do some culinary training and have some cul culinary training, specifically whole foods cuisine culinary training, because I do love food, which is actually an entire another podcast that I do want to have soon. I do love food. People assume like, hey, if you can lose weight, it's because you don't love food. I love food. I love learning about food. I, lo I love food cooking techniques, preparation techniques. But notice that my way of engaging and showing appreciation, it is. it doesn't have to be just me grabbing a piece of whatever they made and like throwing it in my mouth if I don't want it. If I do want it, then I plan for it and I enjoy it, guilt-free, worry-free, and all of that. But if I don't want it, and if it's not part of what I'm wanting to eat that day, I'm not going to eat it just because I don't want to offend them. Because I know that that's not up to me. That's completely up to them. I also don't go and choose to eat it if I don't want to, because I have this false belief that that is the only way of expressing gratitude. There are so many ways to express gratitude and I love to do it by just verbally expressing it. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. How did you do it? Uh, you know, it looks so good, etc. Do not have to eat it if I don't want to. Think about that vegetarian. If they literally don't eat meat, would you expect someone to go and eat that meat if they haven't done so their entire life for reasons that are important to them? Right? So if maintaining your weight or getting to a certain weight or maybe certain foods that you don't feel well if you eat them or you just don't feel or look your best, that is important to you. That's your priority. You get to decide that and that's okay. So what a lot of this sums up to is like when you are feeling the sense of obligation, when you notice yourself that you're about to do some obligation eating and you know what, We've, we're coining the term here, obligation eating. Just kind of notice, oh my gosh, this is totally obligation eating. Like I don't even want this. I don't actually want it. I didn't plan for it. The only reason if I eat this right now is because I feel like I might offend someone or I don't want to make someone feel bad, et cetera. I want you to ask yourself, what are the stories I'm telling myself about me not eating this? 
you're likely telling yourself that the other person's going to think you're rude or that you're being ungrateful or that that person worked so hard and it was so much work and et cetera, et cetera. And every time you do, like, just think about my client's example, like for her and the story that I shared with you in the moment, it felt so real. Like, She literally had this story in her head of this client like slaving away in her kitchen, working so hard, almost envisioning her being miserable, working hard, making these cookies. And also she envisioned the part of the story where like the next day she would ask her, how was it? And if she hadn't tasted it, she would be offended. And also that it was awkward if she didn't have it just because she, you know, was choosing not to have sugar and was wanting to lose that weight. Turns out, All of those stories, none of them were true. They were just stories. Turns out this lady didn't even have them herself because she didn't want to eat the sugar because she was watching her weight. And so fascinating that her client was so confident about it. Like, oh yeah, I just brought these over here so you guys can enjoy them because I love to bake and I'm not going to eat the sugar, right? One of the things I that I want to offer to you and that I also offer to my client is like, what if you gave yourself the permission to be just as confident about your choices? Just the way that her client was, her patient. She just said, oh yeah, I don't eat sugar, but here you go. You guys can enjoy this. She was unapologetic about it and just, hey, that was just my choice. No apology, just really confident about that. What if you give yourself the permission to be unapologetic and confident about your choices and notice that that doesn't have to mean that you are unappreciative or rude. You can be so gracious, express so much appreciation in so many other ways. All right, my friends, I hope that that story was so, so valuable to you. Anytime you notice that you're about to eat something and it is purely out of obligation. You don't even want it. It's not a part of your plan. It's not aligned with your goals. Question whatever stories you're telling yourself about that other person, about the situation. I used to do so much obligation eating because I always was just wanting to people please. And the thing about people pleasing is that it becomes such a problem when you are more concerned with this idea that your behavior needs to please or be acceptable to someone else at the expense of what you want for you. That's when it becomes a problem. The solution is really to give yourself permission that what is important to you and what you want is completely okay. And you can make those decisions and then the people around you, it's completely up to them what they want to think and feel. And that there are other ways that literally putting food in your mouth is not the only way to express gratitude or to have connection or to be engaged or to be gracious. There are so many other ways you can express it verbally. You can write thank you cards. There are so many other things you can do. So you can also ask yourself like, all right, if what I'm wanting to do here is express gratitude, how else can I do that? If I don't feel like I, the only way to do that is to eat this food in this moment in front of this person, but really stop and question, what are the stories I'm telling myself? Because very often all these ideas we have about this person's going to think I'm rude. It's going to be a huge deal. It's going to be awkward. Very often it's like, no one even cares. They don't even notice the world goes on. If you don't eat that cookie that someone brought to the office. So just start to question those beliefs, those stories you tell yourself that create that sense of obligation. When we continue to keep all the same stories in our head and believe them, then we're never able to change our behaviors or change our results. You have to question those in order to then change your behavior and change your results. Have an amazing, amazing week, and I'll see you here next week. Bye. This has been The Last 10 Podcast. Now we know when you take the best care of yourself and feel amazing at your ideal weight, you'll give nothing but your best, maximize your creativity, have mental clarity, and show up with true boss confidence in your business and career. Get your free guide on how to lose the final 10 at www.brendalomelli.com.